Today I'm going to be showing and demonstrating how to train your own uh, Azergon upscaling models. So obviously first, to start off, what you're going to need to do is clone or just download the zip of the repository. Then you can just uh, extract it here or just anywhere. I would recommend doing this on a drive or hard drive that you have a lot of space on, as usually it takes up quite a bit of space sometimes, depending on what your settings are. But that being said, so once you have it cloned or downloaded, you can open it up. Then obviously follow the instructions. So scroll down here and first what you're going to need to do is install the dependencies. I obviously don't I already have these done. But make sure once you do all that, the dependencies, uh open up the folder here. What I do is I hold shift and right click in the folder and then you can open up the PowerShell and then just uh, do the setup uh, script or whatever and once it's done you can just go ahead and close this now first what you need to do is obviously need a bunch of images or pictures for your data, data set obviously videos work too but for this video I'm just going to be showing uh, video game textures so once you have like a decent amount I'm going to be using a thousand for this uh, video so once you have it, uh, all of them set up in a folder like this, what you're going to need to do is, uh, so all of these are, as you can see here, these are 512 by 512. We're also going to need to downscale it so we have lower resolution ones, so it knows the difference between low res and high res, so it can, I guess, learn how to upscale it. What we're going to do is copy the directory of our high resolution, paste it in the source, and... Uh, for our output directory or destination, right click in your uh, Azergon folder, right click and add a new folder called datasets, and open it and make a new folder. I'll just do test underscore dataset. And here we're going to do test underscore dataset underscore hr. And then we can set this as, or no, this will be low resolution, my bad. We'll rename this to underscore LR. And then copy the directory for this, paste it in here. And then what I usually do is just half the quality of our images. So, for example, my high resolution ones are 512, so we'll do 256 for this. And once you have these, uh, or once you have it set to here, you can just leave the rest default. And then just go ahead and click pre-process. As you can see here, if we go to our... See, it's outputting all the images. Just got to wait for that to be done. In the meantime, I'm going to make a new folder called test underscore dataset underscore hr. It will be our high-resolution images. Now I'm also going to just change this back to 512, so it'll automatically convert it to PNG for me because I can't be bothered doing it myself. So I'm just going to set it to the same resolution it already is, and then change this to the high resolution folder, the output, do like that, and then pre-process. Now we have our high resolution and low resolution set up in the proper folders. And while that's doing it, what we can do is go ahead and make a new folder called meta underscore info. And in here, make a new text document called meta underscore info underscore test data set. That. And once it's done, everything's I mean, it's still going through it, but what we can do is get the, while, while it's waiting, we can open up PowerShell in the base directory. And what you're going to want to type is Python space, uh, I believe it's scripts slash generate underscore meta underscore info dot pi and then now we put our inputs or it's just input so we'll go here to data set so it'll be data sets slash test underscore data set slash and then it'll be test underscore data set underscore hr and then put a comma and then data sets slash test underscore data set slash test underscore data set underscore lr 
and then now do uh, root and now we just do test underscore data set s underscore or we do data sets and slash test underscore data sets then put a comma so this is the root for the first folder now we need to do the same for the next one And lastly, now we have to do the meta info uh, input. Now we do data sets, slash test underscore data sets, data set, and slash meta underscore info, and slash meta underscore info, and type test underscore data set dot txt. And then if you've done this correctly, what it should do is output all the file names into the text file. I don't believe I've done this correctly. Hold on. Let me try. Um, hold on. So it should be scripts and then generate meta info. Yeah. Oh, I think I, I named these wrong. So go to your data set and then. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I renamed, I named this wrong, the output, or the, what? Oh, I see it here. All the way at the start, I, rename, I named this incorrectly. And I'll try this. I gotta go to the end, I think. There we go. Now, if we delete this, and go to our meta info folder. Okay, what? Uh, I might have done this wrong again. Hold on, let me double check. Oh yeah, I did the root folder wrong. Yeah, let's try that again. There, now, now it's outputting correctly, so we can close this. And if you open this, as you can see, it's all the high resolution and the low resolution in one. Okay, maybe not because I named these folders wrong. So go here, rename this from LR to multi scale, I believe. How you should do it. That. Now we can generate the uh, meta info again. Oh, that's not the right end thing. Python script slash generate meta underscore info dot pi and input. First, let me empty out this text file, make sure, and continue with this. There we go. Now it's outputted all of the images. So just make sure you have the uh, low quality images folder named multiscale. As you can see, there's multi-scale ones and the high-resolution ones in the meta info. Now, what we can do is go back here, and we can go to options. This is like the settings or uh, for your upscaling model. But what I'm going to do is just go to the Real Ezergon 4x Plus. I'm just going to copy this and paste it and rename it. I'm just going to name this train underscore test underscore data set underscore 4x like that we can go ahead and open this 
And you can rename the model. You can rename that. Uh, don't rename the model type and the scale is fine like this. Or you can change the scale to... The scale is how much it's going to be upscaling it. So 4 is 4x obviously and you can leave this to auto. And what we're going to do is change this to s underscore data set and then change the data root so what we're going to do is uh want to change this to we're going to change this to uh s underscore data set so and then we can change this to our meta info directory You can save that. And then uh, also, it's worth noting that the GT underscore size, if it's a 256, it'll take a lot longer. But obviously, it, I believe it'll be a lot higher quality. So if, if you want that trade off, you can lower it to like something like 128. This is what I trained my recent model on, and it worked pretty well. So you can change this to 128 as well, this one down here. You can just leave this commented out for now. And then. Now what we're going to want to do is download and uh, set up the pre-trained model. So I'll leave a link in the description for this, but what you want to do is go to, where is it? I have it saved here somewhere. Wait, I, I can just find it here. It should be, actually here, one second, let me find it. Yeah, so, uh, as you can see, I found it here. Uh, now, once you download it, go to your base directory, go to experiments, and then pre-trained models. And then what you want to do is drag the file that's downloaded into there. Just like that. And then go back to your options. And then change the pre-trained model to the correct name. So you can just rename this, copy the name. And then paste it here, like that. And scroll down some more. And uh, here is the total iterations. So if you want it to be longer but higher quality, obviously raise it. For this one, I'm just going to be using 1000. As it's going to be really short and I can demonstrate it for the video and don't have to wait 7 hours. So we're just going to do 1000. Obviously, if you want a good model, you're going to want to make this a lot higher. And then down here, I'm going to change this from save checkpoint frequency. This is how often it'll save like a copy of the model. So I'm going to change this to 500 so we can save two versions. And then print frequency, we can keep this on 100. Obviously, all these settings you can tweak and change. I'm going to change the batch size per GPU to 4 as this will not overheat and just like bake my fucking CPU, so, or GPU I mean. I'm also going to change this to 4 as well, the num worker for GPU. You obviously don't need to do this, but you can play around with that. And this should be good now. And minimize out of that. And go back to your directory and... Now I believe we should be good to train or start training our data set. Open up PowerShell or command prompt. And what you want to do is do python real ezergon slash train dot pi. And then now I believe it's dash opt or for options and then options slash and then put the YML file name. So train underscore test underscore dataset underscore four x dot YML. And then you can either do debug like this or what you usually do is do auto underscore resume. Obviously, you can play around with either of these. They pretty much do the same thing. But once you run this, it should start spitting out a bunch of code. Not code, but text. Not sure what it's doing right now. Oh, there we go. And then if you to see the output, go to experiments, and it'll make a new folder here. And then models, we just got to wait a bit. And it should start generating the models.
as you can see here it says started training from epoch which means not like total passes over the data set so it's zero passes right now iteration zero the next message will probably be uh, epoch one iteration 500 or 100 i mean i believe now we just gotta wait a bit and it just should, should start working While this is uh, running, what you can do is go ahead and set, download and set up Chainer, which is good to be, a, it's like a good program to test different models. Uh, as you can see here, uh, first it says iteration 100, and then the ETA, so it's going to be like three minutes till it's done, so, because I only set a thousand iterations. So, what you can do is download Chainer while we wait. I'll leave a link in the description, of course. So just make sure you download the latest release. Make sure you get the one for your uh, system, of course. Then what you can do is open up Chainer. Once this is open, what you can do is just drag in an image. Uh, let me get a different one. For example, something like this, you can drag this in, and then you can select the orange thing, this is the model, then search upscale, actually, if you, first you, I think you have to install iTorch and stuff for Chainer, I think it prompts you to do it, it says something like, oh yeah, you click here, it says missing nodes, click this, and then just install PyTorch and all the other ones, so you can use the upscale node, so use the upscale one like this, and then what you can do is you upscale image and then save image like that and then you can copy over the image name to the output like that and uh, make a output directory like this that, and then oh, we just gotta wait for it to output a model oh it already did the 500 iteration one now we just gotta wait for it. We can try this one for now. Uh, so once it's loaded, it'll tell you all the information about it. Then just put it into the upscale here, like that. You can change the resolution resolution to what you want. I'm just gonna do 4K like that, and then click Run. It'll output here. Might take a second because it's going up to 4K, but also what you can do for multiple images, you can do image iterator, I believe the node is called. Uh, yeah, image file iterator is the name of it. So you can just put a directory and it go through all the images in there. Now, now that it's done, it's outputted the upscaled image. As you can see, it obviously doesn't look that good because it's only rained for like five minutes. But it's definitely upscaled. As you can see, you zoom in, there's a lot more pixels. But obviously, the longer you train it, the higher settings you have, the better it'll be. So that's basically it. So I guess leave in the comments if you have any questions or trouble.